In this video, I want to talk about a, a mindset, you know, more of a psychological issue that I see a lot of PhD students and young researchers suffer from. And this is something called imposter syndrome. And in a nutshell, an imposter syndrome, you know, or somebody who feels like an imposter, basically feels that they are not good enough, that other people are better, and that they're basically feeling fake. They're feeling like they kind of don't deserve the place and where they currently are, right? And this is a very common condition that a lot of PhD students and young researchers that I've worked with initially suffer from. And there's some serious consequences because, you know, this obviously makes you feel super unhappy and in some cases even depressed, but it also slows down your progress and in some cases makes you even drop out of your PhD or just not finish it at all. So that's why in this video I want to show you, you know, what the causes of the imposter syndrome are and how you can actually overcome them. So let's dive into it. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kuczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where I help university students and researchers write research papers for high-impact journals. So, I've just explained, you know, what the imposter syndrome is and that it's this feeling of like you're not good enough, like you're a fake, basically, and you don't deserve to be where you are. And there are some important causes of it that we can identify and then try to try to get rid of, nip in the bud, if you will, so that the imposter syndrome doesn't grow out of proportion. Now, the first really important thing is what I would call the comparison curse. What is the comparison curse? It's basically this thing of comparing yourself to others constantly, right? So what a lot of what happens to a lot of young researchers and PhD students is that they look at people around them and they see other people publishing in high impact journals, advancing with the thesis, or they maybe, you know, read other papers and they say, oh damn, like I'd never be able to write like that. You know, look at my own writing, I'd never be able to write like this paper that I'm reading now or this book, right? You, maybe you recognize that feeling yourself, you know, you're comparing yourself to others constantly. And that creates this feeling that you're not good enough, that you're an imposter, right? But what you should do instead is to compare your current self to your former self, to how you were a month ago or a, a week ago and so on. Because if you think about it, if you're trying to learn a new skill, for example, writing a research paper, you can't compare yourself to people who have already mastered that skill because those people are so far ahead of you that you're always going to look bad in comparison, right? But those people that are far ahead of you and have already mastered academic writing, they, they were in the same situation as you are now a long time ago, right? So what you want to do instead is, you know, look at your skills a month ago and compare them to your current skills to notice the progress. And there's always progress. Sometimes you might not be able to see it, but there is always progress that we're making, you know? And a very simple trick to do that is to, for example, um, copy and paste pieces of your writing, you know, and do that on a weekly basis. Just, just paste a piece of writing, you know, into a table and then compare it, you know, after a month and then after two months and after three months and you will start seeing your progress, you know. Write down how much you've written, how much you've read, you know, how much you've researched. Have it all written down and when you're starting to feel like, oh, you know, this is not my place, I haven't done enough work, look at those numbers and the numbers will tell you the truth. So that's the first cause of the imposter syndrome, the comparison curse. Now, the second really important cause um, of it is unrealistic goals or maybe even not having any goals at all and not having priorities at all, right? Because what often happens is that, you know, like when we set our goals, the, the, the vague, like I want to get a PhD, I want to finish my thesis, but we, we don't dive deeper and, and really specify, you know, what we need to do, what the priority is, by when, and, and set goals that are, that are realistic, you know, because 
then when you have goals that you're constantly underachieving and you're not hitting your goals, well, obviously you're going to feel depressed, right? So, you know, you've got to look at your current situation and your current abilities and then set small daily goals that you can achieve. To give you a practical example, let's say you're really struggling with writing, you know, and at the moment, you know, it's a struggle to write one paragraph a day, right? Well, then if you set a goal to yourself that today I'm going to write one page, you're going to fail. That's guaranteed, right? But if you're going to set today your goal today that today I'm going to write one paragraph, well, that's, it's totally possible to achieve it, you know, in your current situation. And if you achieve it, you will feel better. Like you will have that, you know, rush of endorphins and because you have achieved your goal. So tomorrow or the week after you can start, you can start raising it. So from one paragraph, well, I'm going to try to write two paragraphs, right? So set very achievable and clear goals with a clear time frame that, that you can achieve. This will really, really help you as well overcome the imposter syndrome. Because when we are starting to achieve our goals, we start seeing a progress as well. And when you see your progress um, and you're moving forward towards your goals, that's when you know you start feeling happy. And the third cause of the imposter syndrome is the what I call the perfectionist delusion. Why do I call it a delusion? Well, because perfect doesn't really exist. Nothing is ever perfect, especially in the academia, right? And I know a lot of uh, young researchers and PhD students, when they write, they want to get it perfect. They want to get this sentence or paragraph perfect. And as a result, well, what happens? Well, they spend a lot of time kind of thinking about this sentence and using Grammarly and asking the friends if the sentence is correct and checking the paragraph and rewriting it and rebuilding it just to find out that at the end of the day, they haven't written anything and they're still at the same bloody paragraph, right? And that's a problem because you're not progressing anywhere. And number two, you're, you know, you're feeling bad about yourself, obviously, because you haven't done any work. And number three, you're starting to feel like a fake, like you shouldn't be here, like an imposter, right? So how do you tackle perfectionist delusion? Well, the first thing is to acknowledge that it's a delusion. You know, you have to, and, and if you're struggling with it, just write it down for yourself and put it on your desk. Perfection does not exist. It's a delusion, you know. Um, and what you should do next is to strive to be 1% better every single day. So the, to, to give you an example of how powerful this is, you know, being 1% every, every, better every day, because you might think, well, but that's, that's stupid, like that's not really going to change my situation, you know, I need massive change right now. But massive change is impossible, like we think that those certain things kind of like happen and people all of a sudden become successful, right? We look at, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo maybe or Kobe Bryant and we think, wow, like how did this person ever become so good at what they do, right? What we forget to notice is the is those incremental changes that people like Kobe Bryant or Cristiano Ronaldo like have made throughout their lives. Every single day, they've tried to be one percent better. And what happens is that like it's it's a curve like this, where at the beginning you're not seeing much progress, and then all of a sudden your progress becomes exponential. You cross a tipping point where you just go like, and the progress is exponential, right? And there's a very interesting story to illustrate that of the British cycling team. There was a point where the British cycling team was so bad that they couldn't even get a sponsor for the t-shirts and the bikes because no biking cycling firm wanted to be associated with them and have them as an image, you know. And there came a new coach, you know, that they hired. Uh, it was probably a miracle that they could find anybody to coach them at that time. And this coach's philosophy was 1% better. We're going to try to make incremental changes every single day to achieve our goal, right? So, and, and that's what they did. Like every single week, month, they, they changed small things and they, and they became better and better and better and better every single day to the point where 
I don't know if it was Beijing Olympics or in Rio, like the British cycling team was the most successful team. Like they, they were winning gold medals like nobody else. And they started winning tours like, like Tour de France, you know? And you kind of think like, how did they do that? Well, it was through 1% better, you know? And, and, but if you, you know, start at the beginning where they were and, and then you, you were to look at the best, other best cycling teams and you would say, man, we're never going to get there. We are so bad here, right? You know, we are imposters really, we'll never get there. Well, you can, but just focus on being 1% better every single day and, and you will get there. Um, there's no doubt about it. So in this video, you know, I looked at the three main causes of the imposter syndrome and how to overcome them. And if that's, you know, an issue that you are suffering from, then let's talk because I might be able to help you further and you can apply for a free one-to-one -one strategy session where we're going to look at and identify your challenges, pinpoint your goals, and then see if and how I might be able to help you to achieve those goals. So if you're interested, there should be a link in the description to this um, video. And of course, if you liked it, then hit the like button, the subscribe button, so you don't miss future videos.